We are Home Game Ministries. You know, you say you wait. So, amen, 
Praise is part of the process while you wait. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, amen. Those of you that's in here, to, in here today and maybe watching by live, amen. If you believe in God for something, amen. Do you have a praise in heaven right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have a praise in your belly to give God? See, I ain't trying to pump Hallelujah. I'm asking you, do you have a praise? And this is an opportunity to re to release a sound in the atmosphere that let God know I'm still trusting you. See, your praise let God know I'm still trusting you. I'm still believing you. See, some of you, your sound has changed from the time you prayed. While you wait no manifestation, your sound has changed. God said, I want that same sound that you gave me when you asked for what you asked for. It's just like folks that said, keep that same energy. God said, keep that same sound you had when you first prayed. Don't change your sound. There was a sound. There was a sound. The Bible said in the book of Acts, amen, there was a noise. There was a shaking. And then, uh, uh, I mean, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, there was a noise, a shaking, and a coming in. Are you there? Don't lose your sound. Your sound is the only evidence that you still believe in God. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can go ahead and be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what you're waiting on. Hallelujah. You go ahead and be seated. Hallelujah. I'm going to stay, amen, with Hallelujah. Hallelujah. my message on today. Hallelujah. The word, the word that God gave me. I'm going to stay with it on today. Hallelujah. Amen. When you flowing, amen. When you're under the anointing, amen. Not everybody. But when you under the anointing, amen, especially if you prophetic, amen, there'll be so much. Amen. That's coming to you. Yeah. But you got to know how to, amen, especially prophets or when you prophet. Just as you prophesy, I don't mean you prophet, okay? Hello. But you got to know how to, when stuff coming at you, when you are flowing in the spirit, you got to know what veins to plug into. Are you there? Because when you prophet, people will pull on you. But you got to understand, stay with God. Yes, amen. Don't go where they trying to pull you to and have you prophesy and you stay with God. God. Are you there? Lord. See, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the folk that yes. prophesy. Yes. 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 Because people will pull on you, but you got to stay with the flow of the Spirit because prophets can prophesy, but they don't mean God is saying that. Are you there? Jesus. They don't mean God is saying that in his hour. They don't mean he's saying that. See, in a prophet, you, pro you can prophesy. You can prophesy. You can, because you understand there's a difference between what God is saying now and there's a difference between a prophet decreeing and declaring. The Bible says you shall decree a thing and it shall be accepted. Yeah. So prophets have authority to decree and declare. They can speak stuff over your life, but what is God saying now? My God. Yeah. See, you need that realm. You need what God yeah. said now. A, a, a prophet is always relevant because they can speak in any season. That's why Paul told Timothy, uh, uh, be instant in season and out of season. So even, amen, out of season, a prophet can speak, but you want to be able to speak within the channel that God is flowing through at that time. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. And just like right now, on the radio station, on, 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 on um, series, they, they got um, Kirk Franklin, Heart and Soul. No, they got what they call it. Kirk Franklin. Uh, y'all hit me out. Who y'all got? You know? <laughs> and Kirk Franklin uh, on series. Then you got the Heart and Soul. See, you got five. I said the Heart and Soul. I know you, you, you listen to it. That, that's how I was thinking, man. Just, heart and Soul. You got it. Uh, then you got all kinds of other channels on there. Okay, right now, don't nobody in here know what's playing. You don't know what's playing because you're not what? Tuned in. Amen. God is always speaking. But everybody not always plugged in. Yes, Are you there? Everybody's not always connected. So if you're not connected, it's good to get connected to somebody that's connected. Are you there? Too many familiar voices and strange voices talking and God ain't saying that. You know, you, you gotta know how to, you know, Decipher, okay, there they are. They're not saying that. That, that. No. Familiar voices. 
You got to know what God is saying in this hour. Because most people that say God saying something have no power, no demonstration of what they're saying God saying. So God sent you to say something and he didn't give you the power to perform what you're saying? Are you there? Jesus said he was sent from God. He showed demonstration, which was proof that God did sin. No man could raise the dead. That was proof. Are you there? Jesus said, Lie, God sent him to the tomb to raise Lion from the dead. Now, what if he went to the tomb and couldn't raise him? Right. Something wrong. You said God told you. Are you there? Man. So that should be a performance in this season. Yes. Oh, of those God. that say God is saying, God say the proof that I'm saying, they will be able to perform. Yes. They will not just say I said, they will be able to demonstrate what I said. Yeah. Are you there? Because it's too many saying God said, but God said, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm show a distinction because those that say I said are going to have the power to perform. Because there's no way God going to give you all that revelation or give you understanding or send you and don't equip you to perform. Every apostle was able to perform. They preached and they performed. They demonstrated what they preached. Are you there? Some of us, that where we at, we, we, we preached before we lived it. Now you've preached it, and you're in the process of living what you preach. Then there are those that lived it first, then they preached it. Yeah. Don't get mad over a message you preached that you had to live yet. When you start going through the process. Jesus. You said God can bring you out. You preached it before you lived it. Now it's time for you to trust what you said. Because you start going through. Are you there? Now you got to. Now don't mean God to tell you. He told me he'll bring you out, but now you got to live it. Because some folks preach what they had to live. Yes, but you will not get away with You won't get away from it. If you preach it, believe me. The opportunity is going to present itself for you to live what you preach. And that's all that's going to allow a lot of folks that preach stuff that they ain't live, but then when the fire got hot in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. They found out it was more easier to preach 10 sermons than it is to be a one. Okay. Hello. Huh? Huh? So you just about to receive them. Watch this. You, you, that, that's all going on. You, you said God is, you know, people do that. The reason God allows is because he's separating those that just saying it from those that really believe what they say. Because everybody got a word. Even on Facebook, everybody got a ministry now. I don't understand it, but they do. <laughs> Did I say last week you got ministry? And you say God is a healer, but you ain't never experienced it or never manifest healing in nobody's life. So it's okay because what you preach, God will give you the opportunity to demonstrate. Yes. He taught the disciples and he gave them an opportunity. He, he said, Watch me. I'm casting devils out. Now I'm sending you to go do what you saw me do. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. Come on, see. They, they, the man brought the boy to Jesus and said, I brought him to your disciples. They could cast the devil out. Jesus said, Bring the boy to me. He rebuked the spirit. And they was wondering why we couldn't get the house. So, what's happening with the church here in the season of demonstration? God said, I'm separating. I'm showing you who were just full of wind, who were just talking, versus those that really were sick with my power. Are you there? You're quiet. You're quiet. Because this, is, this helps us mature. As believers, so you won't just be saying something because you're in the season where the devil will try what you say. Yes, he will. They go from just not the preacher, they go from the ministers of music, you're singing it. They go for the lay members, yeah. you running around quoting scripture. The devil gonna test what you say to see if you believe what you say. Can I talk to you? Why are you waiting so patiently to go to Luke 9 and 12? I'm gonna preach this word and get away from up here. Uh, you better learn that the power of God is available. Yes, it's available. Are you there? Yes. I thank God for his word. Yes. Ain't nothing like it. Yes. Ain't nothing substituted. No, nothing. Everything has its own place, but the word to me is superior. Yes. When I come to a church service, I'm looking for the word. I, mean, I enjoy singing. I enjoy all that. I want some wood. Are you there? Give me some word. Feed me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 9 and 12. Mm. 
Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is also breaking, he's breaking traditional religiosity, traditional religious people. Some people, a lot of them, because you, you, you've seen manifestation of God's hand in the past in certain areas, and it really didn't require no faith. Can I talk to y'all? This makes me want to become broken. Don't you know God will bless you out of obedience even though you don't have no faith? My God. Obedience don't always require faith. Can I talk to you? Come on, come on. The Lord loves you enough that he loves you like you are, but he loves you too much to leave you where you are. So he's trying to grow his church up. See, we want to stay where we are, but we're comfortable and we're okay. But God said, no, 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 no. That ain't, I got way more for you than what you, you have experienced. Yes. I want to take you higher and higher. Yes. I got way too much to leave you there. Jesus. Obedience doesn't always require faith. The children of Israel obeyed God when he spoke certain things to them, but they didn't believe what he said. That's why the Bible says over the book of Hebrews chapter 4 that the word profit them nothing not being mixed with faith. I give an example. We can use tithing. Everybody that tithe don't believe it. Some people tithe out of obligation because God said do it. So they're doing it, but they have no faith in what they're doing. They're just doing it. Some people do it out of fear. If I don't do it, then God won't get me. Uh, he's going to break my legs if I don't tie. So they tie. So don't think everything you do that obey God is faith. God will bless you because you obey even though you didn't have no faith. Okay? Amen. Some people pray out of fear, not faith. They pray because they're scared if they don't pray, stuff ain't going to go right. Where the faith they at? Are you there? I'm glad you're quiet. I mean, I got your attention. So, where God is trying to take his church is faith. Yeah. On a whole nother level. And I'm talking about from the pulpit to the back door because you got a lot of preaching going on and they don't have faith. They're just preaching good messages. But when it's time to demonstrate where your power Luke 9 and 12. You got to say, I got it. And when the day began to wear away, then came the twelve and said unto him, Send the multitude away that they may go into the towns and country round about and lodge and get victuals, which is food. For we are here in a desert place. We know what a desert place is. Some of you might be there today. You might have been there for a while. A desert place, a dry place, a place that has no resources. You might be in a position where you feel your, your brook and dry up. There's nothing flowing. Are you still there? Yeah. Nothing going on with you. You, 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 like, you. I'm just in that place. But can I tell you that place is a good place? It might not feel good. Might not look good, but you're right where God wants you. Jesus. You did say he was a believer, right? Yeah. See, again, we say stuff, but then when you get put to the test, yeah. then you go away wall. So that desert place, that dry place, you're in the right place. Sometimes the right place feels like the wrong place. Sometimes the place where God wants you don't feel good. Sometimes where God is taking you feels uncomfortable. You, 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 you yes. say, you know, you know it, I don't want to be here, but God sent you right where I want you. Are you there? Because he's not trying to make you comfortable. He's trying to make you conformable. What does that mean? Conform you. Jesus is God. He's trying to conform you. He ain't worried about your comfort. He's trying to conform you to the image 
of Jesus. They said, send the people away, for we out here in the desert. We're in a dry place. There's no food. There's no, no restaurants. There's no stores. There's no laws. There's nothing out here. We're in a desert place. And many right now are in a dry place. You're in a desert place. You're in a place that's uncomfortable, a place that you don't like, a place that you don't know which way to turn. You don't know which way to go. It is a place that don't feel you. Look at your neighbor and say, that's God. That's God. I'm going to bless you if you stay. Bless us. Are you there? Yeah, there. It don't feel good. It's a place you don't want to be in. A place you want to chose to be in. Some of you saying, you know what? I didn't put myself here, so this got to be God. Because I don't want to pick to be in this. Come on, this show. Come on, you're there. You ever been in something that you say, you know what? I don't even feel like I I, I chose my own life. Okay. I don't even feel like I feel like something else picked this for me. Yeah, Ain't you been there? Yeah. I, 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 I don't even feel like I'm in control or in charge of my own life. I feel like stuff is happening to me that that I have no control over. Yeah. Why is this happening to me? Yeah. Some of you didn't seen this before. You did it with something you didn't saw before. You you didn't been through this before. You said, "Hold up, now I've been around this mountain before." Yeah, yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Watch this, verse thirteen. But he said unto them, "Now I'm going to put this in English for you." The word said, "Give ye them to eat," but you don't understand it, so I'm going to put it in the language you understand. Jesus said, "No, nah, you feel." <laughs> He said, you feed them. Yes. They told Jesus, send the people away from the desert so they can find some way to eat. Jesus said, no, you feed them. Now, some of you, 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 God is asking you to do stuff and you check in your pockets. God is asking you to do stuff and you check in your bank account. God is asking you to do stuff and, and, and you trying to find your familiar usual crutches that you usually lean on. You know, that, that cousin ain't there. You know, that cousin always want to come through for you, but they can't die. They can cut their eyes. You usually be able to go to this person and get them or something that you can't get it now. You, you, you can't go back to that bank because you didn't pay them when you're supposed to. You can't go back and get a loan because you didn't do, see, your resources being yeah. cut. Your brooks dry up. Yeah. The folk you usually can call on, you can't call them no more. So God is knocking them crutches from under you. Jesus. You said, what is he doing? He's, he's allowing you to recognize I'm, I'm allowing you to be in a desert place. I'm allowing you to be in a dry place. The places you used to can go and get encouragement, it ain't there no more. The places you used to go get joy, it ain't there no more. As a matter of fact, God is fixing it to where even the wife can't even look to the husband no more. Ah, do you want this truth? Uh -huh. He be fixing it because see, you know, it, it, it's okay to man to provide, but God said, I'm tired of hearing that. You know, I'm your provider, but you depend that too much on your husband. Yeah. Are you there or not? Yeah. So God fixed the way even the man, your new boo, your old boo, your side boo, can't do it. They ain't even got the money no more. Are you there? Amen. They all gotta get a second job just to meet your needs. Jesus said, no, you give them to eat. Now, how are we going to be in a desert place and, Lord, you see, ain't nothing out here. You got multitudes of people following you. Ain't no food out here, and you're going to tell me to feed them. With what? Come on, some of y'all had that in your mouth for God. Lord, with what? God said, I want you to go over there, and I want you to buy that house. With what? Come on, man. Have you seen where I work? Do you know what they're paying me an hour? God said, go do what I say. Well, Lord, how? Are you there? Lord, I want, I, I, Lord said, I want you to do this. You said, with what? Jesus had told the disciples, I want you to do something. I want you to feed these 5,000 folks you try to send away. Huh? I want you to feed them. See, some of y'all think it takes a lot. A lot of people to do a lot. God said, no, I'm going to do a whole lot with your living. Jesus, 
Uh huh. See, you want a lot so you can sit back comfortably. God said, I'm making it that way. I'm making you uncomfortable by keeping you with a living. I'm making you uncomfortable by keeping you with badly enough. My God. You said, Lord, why are you making me uncomfortable when keeping me with badly enough? He said, I'm making you uncomfortable when keeping you with badly enough because when I gave you too much, you forgot about me. When I gave you too much, you didn't pray. When I gave you too much, you didn't seek me. When I gave you too much, you turned from me. So I'm keeping you with bad enough. In other words, God said, I'm going to keep your head above water. I'm not going to let you go under. I'm going to keep your head above water, but that ain't my best for you. I got more. But right now, I got to deal with you like that in order to get you to come to another level. Oh my God. Are you there? Can I preach it like I'm feeling? Jesus. 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 Stay with me. Watch this. Jesus said, you feel me. Watch this. See, we got a response for God now. And they say it. We have no more but five loaves and two fishes. Ain't that just like us telling God what we got? Like he don't know what you got. You know, sometimes we think God did Lord, you must have seen my purse. You, you, I know you see all. You must have seen what's in my wallet. Huh? The Lord told you to tithe and you you, you went and found some old legal list of religion by the purse and said tithe and foot down. Huh? You know how folks do. You know, they heard the law, but then they try to get him off their country so they find somebody that'll agree with them not want to pay. Man, you know we don't pick a tie. Right. Now you feel good. You know, some people find folk to make them feel good in their disobedience. True. Make them feel comfortable in their disobedience. They got to go find another rebellious person. Well, I'm good then. They, they, they understand you. We eye to eye. You see what we, you know. We, we. Are you there? Watch this. They said, we ain't got but two fish. We got five loaves and two fish. Somebody said that was my limit. But well, watch this now. I want y'all, I'm telling you, I, 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 I want you to get this. The two fish and the five loaves is what the little boy had. Mm -hmm. See, I call that that little boy faith. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Two fish, five loaves. That's all they had. See, some of you you don't want to work with what you got. You want more. But you don't want to work with what you got. God saying, look, if you work with what you got, you're going to see my hand. You don't want to do that. You saying, Lord, give me more, then I want more. God said, no, I want you to take your liberty and put it in my hand. Come on, can I talk to you? See, my God, it's coming at me faster than I can. See, I can shoot it out to you, but I know y'all can't eat on that level. So I got to break it down for you. I don't want you to miss it. You can't chew like that. You can't chew as fast as I can get it to you. Watch this. Some of you back here. You might be on a higher level, but I, 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 I want everybody to get it. Listen. They said, we ain't got two fish, five loaves. Except we should go and buy meat for all these people. Watch this. And they, and in another translation, or or I think over the book of Mark, this is what it said. It'll take eight months' wages. See, they thought Jesus would tell them to go to work when he said feed the people. They thought Jesus would say, go get a second job. Come on, on y'all don't want to talk Jesus, about it. Uh, See, that's, that's what you do. When God trying to tell you something, you think he's looking at your job. You think he told you to go get a, a, a night job. And then most of them, when they got a job, they didn't be in his house. You when he got that second job, now you're too tired to even come to, to the house of God. So God going to give you another job to make you work and slave and keep you out of his house? Okay. Are you there? So you done got a second job and you still struggling. You got a second job and still can't pay your mortgage. You got a second job and still can't pay your bill. You got a second job and come on, somebody, are you there? And some are working on a third job. Got 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 two jobs and a hustle. Doing all that and still struggling. Doing all that and still behind on your car You don't see how the devil tricking you. 
You know, and all that shit can't be in God's house. So you didn't forsook the Lord because you got to work to take care of yourself, but you stand there and try to quote Philippians 4 and 19 and say, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory in Christ, but would like to need you supply your own need. Come on, my God. See, you quote the stuff you don't believe. Because if you go in there, he don't supply. Why are you out here working twice? Right. Working two times on a hustle. Yeah. Holly, you chasing the bag. You out here grinding. You chasing the bag. You ain't caught the bag. Cut the bag right in front of me. Cut the bag no better. My God. Are you there? Come on here now. Yeah. They said, what are we going to go get enough food? It's going to take eight months of working. Eight months of working. Verse 14 said, for they were about 5,000 people. Jesus has told 12 people to feed 5,000 folk in a desert. The Lord has told you to go buy a $200,000 house on a job you ain't making for $8 an hour. Can I talk to you? I'm going to bring it with you. I'm going to bring it right where you at. Since you, you want to sleep on me, I'm going to bring it with you. He just told you to go get 100 acres of land and then your boss just ready to fire you off. The Lord just told you, leave that monster collar and go to that Mercedes collar and get that Mercedes I told you, but you over here at a monster collar. Oh, because you keep checking your bank statement. You sitting there worried about credit. God will never send you somewhere based on your credit. Come on. Come on. Ah, man. Hello. Ah, yeah. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to the wall. Okay. We go, people, people around me sitting there telling you. Listen, your mind, I'm trying to get y'all mind frame up with that poverty thinking. Broke should never come out of a child of God's mouth. Never. Lack should never come out your mouth. It shouldn't even be in your vocabulary. Your vernacular shouldn't even be. You, let me tell you something. Broke. That should be foreign language to you. You should maybe interpret that. What is that? See, y'all don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. You want to know what y'all want? Y'all don't want to share me shaking the bad Negro. That's what you want. You want something like that. Yeah, you want Daniel in the lives. That's what you want me to preach some Sunday school message. I'm trying to give you some meat. You want to suck a bottle. Are you there? Broke should be in your vocabulary. Lack should be in your vocabulary. Are you still there? Something shouldn't be named among you. If you ain't got it in your purse, you ain't got it in your wallet, you ain't got it in your hand, that still should not allow broke to come out your mouth. Because watch this, you're never broke. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast on today. I pray that something was said that blessed you. All of our contact information is on the screen if you would like to support donate, or partner with us. Again, thank you for watching Whole Man Ministries Incorporated.